All right, out here for a morning walk and uh, to show you something interesting down here. You can see how deep some of these footprints are. That's the video I did about the, I was right over standing over there and uh, about the whole Christ is King thing, but it's probably, it goes down in there pretty deep, probably at least, I'd say 18 inches of snow. But if you look down at my feet right now, I'm standing on top of the snow. Yesterday it actually went up to 61 degrees Fahrenheit. And so the snow, it gets wet, you know, and starts to melt. And then it dropped down to about 18 degrees this morning. And uh, it's still in the 20s out here. And I can just walk right on top of the snow. I'm not sinking in. So it's pretty nice. But by this afternoon, it'll be back to, you know, going into my knees <laughs> in this type of snow right here. I'm probably walking on about two feet of snow right now. So no snowshoes. <clears throat> of course, you can... Um, wear snowshoes and that will keep you up as well but uh, but anyhow unique video topic today um, the Jews and Amish phone booths what huh well this is going to be a good video it might sound very weird and kooky but well, that's kind of a hallmark of this ministry <clears throat> but uh, stick with me it will make sense by the time I'm done as a boy, I grew up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, the very first Amish settlement there in the area. <clears throat> and um, ancestrally, I've said this many times, I'll say it one more time, my ancestors came to, the Denklinger family came to America in 1720. All right, and uh, we were, we've been there here ever since then. And they settled in Lancaster County. And my ancestors were never Amish. Um, there were some Mennonites, um, Anabaptist mostly, but uh, we were never Amish. But we had Amish neighbors. I grew up around the Amish. I, I knew Amish. I did a little bit of work as a wood turner for some Amish, uh, an Amish uh, furniture maker. Um, you know, my brother, both brothers worked with Amish construction companies. And, you know, Amish were not some, oh great, here I'm hitting area where the snow is warming up a little bit um, because the sunlight's hitting it but uh, we used to always laugh about something and that is that the Amish their their system of belief is is uh, called the ordnung and it's kind of a sometimes they'll have it as a written thing sometimes it's a, just a spoken thing and whatever but they'll have this this thing about them looks like the snow's getting soft this way so I'm gonna have to head back but the Amish will have this thing where they have certain rules of uh, your beard must be a certain length you can't have a mustache it has to be shaved off or others will have the mustache um, the buggy has to be painted a certain way the, your hat brim has to be a certain way um, you know of course no scripture for any of it just like the Roman Catholics and the Baptists and a lot of the religious sects out there that they'll come up with this weird stuff you can't this you can't that chapter book chapter and verse please none given uh, none is required when you're into a religious cult like that but um anyhow part of part of the ordnung for most amish i ever knew was that they're not allowed to have a telephone in the house okay if they're in business of some kind they can have a telephone, that's fine, it's expected you can have a telephone, but it can't be in the house. <clears throat> and so we'd always laugh. My father and I, we'd be driving places and he'd say, look out there and you can see this little little phone booth, look like a outhouse or something out. House is here, field goes this way, out along the tree line, there's a little phone booth out there. And you know, you'd see the Amishman running out to get the phone or something, or you know, had to go out to make a phone call. And we used to always laugh I still remember my father would say, I guess God doesn't see the phone when it's out there in the phone booth. <laughs> you know, and uh, we'll come back to that point. But a funny little story, a guy I used to work with when I worked at the Susquehanna Sante Boat Works, uh, his name was Jack Tomlinson, and um, he told me he used to have a chrome plating and polishing business. And he said that there was an Amishman that would do some, you know, subcontracting type of stuff for him, make 
you know, some little metal parts for him or something. He had a little metal working shop. And his phone was outside on a, on a telephone pole. It didn't even have a building, a structure over it. And so Jack said if they needed to get some parts just to pick on the guy, he said he'd, he'd wait till it was raining, you know, rain in the forecast and whatever, and it's really pouring down rain outside. And he'd call. <laughs> and he said the phone would ring and ring and ring and ring and ring. Finally, he'd be like, hello? And he'd say, oh, hey, this is uh, Jack Tomlinson. You know, well, I'd like to order some parts here. And Okay, yeah, okay, all right, what parts do you need? <laughs> And, and Jack said that they, him and other guys there at his polishing business, they would just, you know, mess with this poor guy. And, and they'd say, uh, well, um, oh, hold on a second. Ah, I thought I had the paper here that said what we needed. Let me find it here. And the guy, yeah, okay, all right, could you call back or say, no, just hold on, I have it. <laughs> they keep the guy on the phone as long as possible. The guy's just getting drenched, you know. And he said sometimes they would, they would do this. And then, you know, he'd order half the parts or something, and then he'd, you know, wait for five minutes, call back and say, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to order the other parts. <laughs> All those guys, you know, they're supposed to be passive. You're not supposed to get angry and, you know, you're supposed to have your emotions under control. And But the guy was just, you're trying my patience here. <laughs> so, uh, just always thought that was a funny story. But, but what's my point with this whole thing? God doesn't see your phone when it's someplace else. See? And how does that relate to the Jews? Well, the more I study the whole thing of the modern Jew movement, the more I see how much they're ashamed of who they are. They'll change their last name to sound like a Gentile. They'll interracially marry to cover up their Jewish features. They'll hide. And I'm not talking about low level, just kind of Jews that are kind of lower class or something. I'm talking the high up, the, the big boys, the guys in Hollywood and and whatever else. And, you know, I'm not at all afraid of Jewish persecution or whatever else because I don't hate Jews. Not at all. Um, I want to make this video to challenge you out there if you're a Jew. Don't cover up for who you are. Don't be ashamed of who God made you to be. Um, if you're Jewish, uh, you are one of God's chosen people. Don't be ashamed of that. You say, but we're scattered into a nation that they wouldn't, they don't like us. If, if they find out that we're Jews, you know, they, they'll persecute us and whatever else. Well, I get that. But, uh, you know, I'm not in my native land right now. My native land is Germany, uh, primarily. There's some Switzerland and even Scotland, a little bit on my maternal grandmother's side, the Campbell clan. Um, but I'm not, you know, I would love to go back to my ancestral homeland if, things ever change with the airline industry and whatever else. I'm not going to fly until things do. But I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of who I am. Um, you say, are you a German? Yeah, I'm a German. Um, again, you know, my sister went through the whole DNA testing thing to see what part she is or this, that, and whatever else. And uh, there's no Jewish blood in us. We're completely Northern European in our ancestry, 100%. Um, you know, I'm not going to cover up who I am. And if you're a Jew out there, uh, God has a plan for you. And you might reject Jesus Christ right now, but you won't be in the future. I'll tell you that. And uh, Jesus is not one that you want to reject because he's God. And uh, Jesus is not anti-Jew. All right. And another thing I've seen is that uh, people say, well, well, the New Testament's an anti-Jewish book. It's, it, it says bad things about the Jews. Well, the Old Testament does as well. <laughs> the Word of God is there to uh, explain about the Jewish people. And there's some pretty bad things that have happened down through the centuries, um, down through the you know, thousands of years, actually. And it's because the Jews get away from God. But then God is willing to forgive them and bring them back. And uh, right now... They're being brought back to the land of Israel in a state of unbelief. And um, there are things that happen in the Bible that aren't necessarily a good thing. They just happen because God has pre-recorded history and he's put it out there as this is the way things are going to occur. And you accept that when you're a believer, when you say, well, I believe the Bible and I know that what the Bible has to say. So... Um, the point of the video here is just as the Amish 
are ashamed of certain things about themselves. They're ashamed. They, they have to hide and you know, we'll sneak out there quickly to the phone and we'll make a phone call. So they don't even have to do that now. They just have their cell phones that they'll call. And uh, <laughs> so you don't have to have the phone booth in the, out in the woods anymore. You just get your cell phone and walk out to the barn and make your calls or whatever. And they do. Um, again, don't be deceived if you visit Lancaster County and, oh, they live like they did in the 1800s. No, they don't. It's, all, it's a big religious scam. And uh, if you're Jew out there, uh, get back to Israel. I'm not saying that as a racist or whatever, you know, get back to your land or something. No, it's just that that's where the promises of God are. That's where the good stuff is at. All right. Um, and don't be ashamed of who you are. Don't say I have to have a rhinoplasty or something to, to change my nose so it's not quite as beaked and hooked and whatever. Man, don't be ashamed of that. Don't be ashamed for one second who you are. And uh, if you're Jewish, uh, don't. Don't marry some Gentile and things so that you can mess up your race. Don't do that. Um, racial segregation in the Bible is a beautiful thing. It's about preserving culture. It's about preserving who you are. It's the exact opposite of the Tower of Babel. You know, uh, integration is is about being embarrassed who you are. Uh, not you. You're ashamed of your culture and your ethnicity and things. Uh, so don't fall for that. So hopefully this has been a little challenge to people out there. I know I have some Jews that watch me and don't believe in Jesus Christ and things. And you're looking for a sign. I get it. Uh, you look at what is called Christianity and you say, I don't want to be part of that mess. <laughs> I agree. Uh, I'm not really part of the whole mess either. I'm such an outsider right now with uh, what is called Christianity that um, most people think I'm lost. Most professing Christians say that I'm a heretic and whatever else. So uh, don't be part of modern professing Christianity because it's an abomination. It has no basis in scripture. Going to the little church buildings and wearing their Sunday best and or the rock concerts and whatever else that they do in the modern, you know, Christian churches. Don't be part of that. But if you're going to wait for the time of Jacob's trouble as a Jew, yeah, you're going to see some things revealed. You'll get to see Moses and Elijah the two witnesses, you'll get to see a lot of miracles, a lot of things happening, and it's going to be a very terrible time. And more than likely, um, there's a chance you might get killed. Uh, not because that's, uh, I hate you or something like that. No, not at all. It's just because that's what the Bible said would happen. So just wanted to put this little video together. Got to thinking about this last night, talking to my wife about it. I said, I'm going to do a little video on that really quickly just to get some people to think. So hopefully you enjoyed that video and uh, we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.